do you call somebody who not only believes they have access to absolute truth, but they also believe that thus having such access to absolute truth, they are then equipped or entitled to impose that absolute truth on others, overriding the objections of others. Um, <clears throat> at the very least, I would call that person a fanatic. Um, but the problem is, of course, I think the Western way of thinking pretty much seems to hold that there is an absolute truth out there which can be accessed, which can be imposed against, or against, upon other people. We don't seem to agree on what that truth actually is, our, and our, our belief in absolute truth and its imposition, I think, has somewhat been watered down a bit by the events of the mid-20th century and totalitarianism, Nazism, Stalinism, that kind of thing. And we've just sort of said, all right, maybe that's not such a, a great idea. <clears throat> But I sometimes, you know, when I analyze what I call popular or contemporary morality or everyday morality or everyday ethics or everyday, what you call it, epistemology or whatever, I find that that idea doggedly clings to our way of thinking and especially in the English-speaking world. Um, in the French-speaking world, it's not quite so bad or quite so pronounced, I should say. Maybe it's not even bad, but... <clears throat> Um, it's been my experience with French Canadians, at least, that they tend to moralize a lot less than English Canadians do, and they're more likely to say, well, you know, that's... This is the world. Who knows what truth is? But we still have to manage our, our affairs in this world. And I think that the French Republic uh, is more founded on that idea. It's more... It, it is... Definitely has an, an idealistic element to it. Strongly idealistic. But it's an idealist idealism that I find is sort of shot through with realism. <clears throat> Some people say the French are almost too realistic in that they that makes them a little bit too when something kind of lousy happens. Um, that's kind of the English moralistic condemnation of the French, but again, the French would probably hold that the English are far too moralistic and you're expecting too much out of human beings. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it's Totalitarianism has never really taken hold in the English-speaking world, but a totalitarian way of thinking, I would say, is probably more common here, more common in our um, view of life, the universe, and everything, um, <clears throat> in that we still got that old kind of puritanical idea that, okay, maybe we disagree on the, the particulars, but we do know the truth is out there. Right and wrong do exist. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you get this in the weirdest places, like uh, lines from um, Hollywood movies. I remember one with Harrison Ford where he was playing, uh, what was his name there, uh, Jack Riley, I think, uh, where he said, uh, no, this isn't about good and evil, it's about right and wrong. <clears throat> this is an extremely common view. Now, do I think that this sort of thing leads to totalitarianism? No. I would say, however, that it robs individual life experiences of a lot of clarity. Um, because if your worldview is contingent upon a right and a wrong existing out there, i.e. an absolute truth, <clears throat> um, you're in for a nasty shock when you're confronted by things like relativism. Um, that kind of PC phobia that gets a hold of people that you know that you're being attacked somehow by some sort of passive aggression through by the PC police or whatever, but you don't really know how to defend yourself because what they're doing is they're substitute, you're substituting your absolute truth for their absolute truth 
and they're attacking you in a way that you can't really come to grips with. <clears throat> um, it's like you're being accused of, um, or, or you're being asked to prove that you didn't do something um, because your ethics, the basic foundations of your ethics are on trial um, by another system that's just as absolutist as yours is. <clears throat> And that, to me, is the kind of the, the nihilistic trap in what I would say the English-speaking world and its ethics. Um, we believe that there is an absolute ethical truth out there, moral truth, and that A, we can access it, and B, we can impose it on other people. It's, you know, gentlemen of the jury, what do you, how do you find the uh, defendant? Guilty or not guilty? <laughs> Um, it's not gentlemen of the jury, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, or people of the jury, whatever they say nowadays, speaking of PC. Um, did the defendant do it or not? <laughs> um, and... As I say, that, that kind of thing has a nihilistic twinge to it, if you ask me, simply because what you would get condemned for this year, you'll be let off with next year and then get condemned for again the following year because our views of absolute truth keep changing. You'd think that the experience of the last few hundred years would have led us to conclude, or maybe the last couple of thousand years, i.e. the Christian era, would have disabused us of the notion that absolute truth is out there and that there is an absolute morality. But I think that, <clears throat> I think that the issue is we haven't really seriously deconstructed our morality in the way that, say, Nietzsche encouraged everyone to do. Uh, go right back to the absolute beginning. And you don't have to actually reject our morality when we find out that it actually just evolved like anything else does. But it's good to see it for what it actually is. Um, for example, um, I might not think that there's such a thing as good or bad people in this universe. Um, or that even if somebody commits a heinous crime, whether or not that says anything about them as human beings. But that doesn't mean that I don't believe that uh, that person ought to go to jail. <clears throat> Maybe not for moral reasons, or, you know, when I, get, when I think about it hard, morally, should this person go to jail or not? Well, morally, who knows? Who, who can tell what this person's moral makeup is? Um, but there are other reasons to put people in jail. Get them off the streets. Um, enforce the social contract. Um, keep the streets safe. Or protect him from himself. Or give him a couple of years to stew in there until he figures out that, you know, you can't go around behaving like this. Or else we won't have a society to live in. Um, so questioning absolute morality and, and absolute truth does not lead to nothing ever getting done unless you have a mindset that relies upon access to moral and ethical certainty and to absolute truth.